Well, in the last video, I referred to unbalanced forces and that unbalanced forces are the forces that you have to have in order for a change in an object's motion to occur. So our focus for today is exactly what is an unbalanced force. Uh, you can also think of it in terms of a net force. And um, let me give you just a quick definition what the definition of net is. A lot of times when somebody gets a job for the very first time, at least in the United States, I'm not sure how it works in other countries, but in the United States, um, when somebody goes and gets a job, and maybe they are supposed to make $7 an hour and they've worked for five hours and so their first paycheck should be $35. Seven times five is 35. But they get their paycheck and it's not $35, it's maybe closer to $27. And they're like, well, what happened to the rest of my money? Well, if you start looking at the paycheck, you see, well, they took out this much for federal taxes and this much for state taxes and this much for local taxes and this much for social security. And so the government pulled out all of these other deductions. And so the amount that you were supposed to get, the $35, was your gross pay. But then after they take all the taxes and all the deductions out, then when you get down to what you actually got to got to bring home, that's called your net pay or your take home pay. And so when we're talking about a net force, what that means is that you're often going to have way more than one force acting on an object. So if you have more than one force, when we sort of take the sum of all those forces together, then what's the final result going to be? Okay, so as an example, um, if I have this particular object right here, and you can see that there are arrows pulling off to the left and arrows pulling off to the right. Now, when we draw these diagrams, um, the size of the arrow is supposed to help to indicate the size of the force. So these two arrows are supposed to be the same size. And so what that means is that um, there's a force this direction, a force this direction. They're both the same magnitude. So is that object going to move? No. It's not because I've got equal forces pulling in opposite directions. It's sort of like a tug of war. It's not going to go anywhere. So these forces would be considered to be balanced forces um, because this is not going to, to cause any kind of a change in motion. So if I have a force of five newtons and newtons is the unit for force and again we'll go into a little bit more detail on what a newton is and where we get that unit from but for today I just accept it so if I've got five newtons going this way and five newtons going this way the forces are balanced and so there's not going to be a change in motion on this object okay now if I look at this object here I still have arrows going each direction but you can see that this arrow is much larger than this one over here so let's say that maybe um, this one is two newtons and maybe this one is seven newtons. And so they're pull since they're pulling in opposite directions, if it was a tug of war, which one's gonna win? Well, this one's larger, so obviously this guy wins. And the seven newtons is offset by two this direction. So since these are pulling in opposite directions, I will end up having a force of five newtons and because uh, force is a vector quantity, I always have to give a direction with my force. So the net force, this, is, this one is an unbalanced force because you can see that the two forces are not the same. And so therefore, my net force is five newtons to the right on this particular uh, object. Now, this object is clearly unbalanced because there's only one force on it going one direction. There's nothing pulling down. There's nothing pulling to the left or right. It's only pulling up, okay? So again, this one will be unbalanced because there's nothing to balance it on the other side. I can have more than one force. I can have several of them all going the same direction. So let's say that maybe this one is three Newtons and maybe this one is three Newtons and then I'm gonna put a big one over here and maybe that one is five Newtons. And so the total amount of net force on this object is going to be 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 3 more is 11. So the total net force here is going to be 11 newtons upwards. Okay, so as you can see, when you're calculating net force on an object, what you're going to do is if they're going opposite directions, you're going to subtract because here 
uh, the net force is going to be zero newtons. So if they're going opposite directions, you're going to subtract. If they're going in the same direction, you're going to add those forces together. Okay? So as you are practicing some problems like this today, you want to make sure that you not only give the magnitude of the force, but that you also give the direction of the force. Is it going to the right, to the left, up, down, west, north, south, east? Whatever it states in the problem, make sure that you are including that direction in your final answer as well.